Stop. How good? Play record. Action. Hello. Welcome. Welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Hi. School. This is a vocational program. It's a restaurant run by students, and this is my colleague, Mike Shina. He was making the sauce today. Really? First of all, I take the wine pot and I put it in the oil. Hi, welcome to the Farm Street Inn. The Farm Street Inn is a student-run restaurant here at Wakefield High School. It is a vocational program designed to train students entry-level skills in the food service industry so they can go on to further education and, and work in the food in the service industry such as hotels, restaurants, and institutions. Uh, in our restaurant, student-run restaurant here, we have several very popular menu items that we serve, and one of them happens to be chicken parmesan with pasta and marinara sauce, which we're going to make for you today. Beside me is Michael Shina, a senior here at that, in the program. He's going to start making the marinara sauce for you. Okay. Now, the first thing Michael is going to do, which we already started to prepare, is that we um, added a meal. Point, hold that, please. We added a meal for this hot oil. Okay. Meal pot, which consists of carrots, celery, and celery and onions, equal parts of each. It is used for flavoring. There's also some garlic in this in this sauce. So we're going to start sauteing this now on the stove. On a high heat to start searing the vegetables to get the, to extract the flavors out of them. At the same time, we're going to add the seasonings. Um, the seasoning to this, which is basil, thyme, bay leaves, and pickling spice. The reason why we put the, the seasoning in now at this time is to sweat all the flavorings out of those, those seasonings as much as possible to give, to give it a robust flavor while the sauce is cooking. If we were to add the spices afterwards, after we added the crushed tomatoes, we would not get the full effect of the spices. It's very important to add it now while we're sauteing. While that's cooking, Michael will be stirring this up periodically to keep it from, from scorching or burning. Um, our next step we want to do with this is that we're going to add some crushed tomatoes to it. I want to get the crushed tomatoes right there. Um, now for this particular recipe, this makes enough sauce about sauce we would make for a regular day here at the Farm Street Inn. This is a number 10 can of crushed tomatoes. Uh, a number 10 can is equivalent to about six and a half pounds. Uh, now, the thing is about crushed tomatoes is that it, um, some tomatoes are better than others in quality, some are thicker than others, and the reason why some are better is because of pretty much uh, because of bitterness. If you would open up a can of crushed tomatoes, and if there was a lot of seeds in it, chances are the crushed tomatoes you'd be using would be very bitter. If you have a lot of seeds in your sauce, and what that means, if you have a lot of seeds in your sauce, and what that means is that um, you're gonna have a lot of acid. If you have a lot of acid, you have bitterness, so you have to offset that. So you want to make sure you pick a, a crushed tomato that does not have too much seeds. Can you give me a plate over there? And one way to check um, and to make sure that your sauce does not have too much seeds or your crushed tomatoes, it's made. Just ladle some out on the plate, and you can spread it out. And you can see that this particular crushed tomato does not have too many seeds in it. But through a lot of the seasoning, you can really be able to see it. And we don't want that. We just want a nice, smooth crushed tomato like this here with not too many seeds. So they'll be, they'll be nice and sweet for us. In the meantime, this is sauté. We'll let the sauté a couple more minutes. And what we'll do, we're going to add these crushed tomatoes to the... To the uh, Mayor Pratt and the seasoning. Now what we want to do now is add to these crushed tomatoes, and you can use your whip, whip wherever it is. Okay, we're going to add salt and pepper to this for flavoring. Maybe salt and pepper. And because crushed tomatoes, or canned tomatoes, are a little bit acid to begin with, we're going to add a little bit of sugar. We're going to add about a quarter of a cup of sugar, and what that does is cut out cuts out the acid or the bitter taste that you may have in some crushed tomatoes. And we're going to stir that up well. Okay, now we can take this and add this to 
while I'm reapply and seasoning. Okay, now with the rubber spatula, we're going to just scrape out the excess or the extra crushed tomato that's, that's left on the side of the bowl so we don't waste anything. Okay, now this would approximately take about an hour at a, at a, at a simmer to let everything cook and incorporate together. Now, we have some sauce already made. Uh, so we're going to just take this now and put this aside for a moment. Take this one and move this up front. This is one that we already have made. It's already prepared. Now, the sauce we just made is pretty much a basic tomato sauce. Now, from this tomato sauce, we can make variations. For example, marinara sauce or cacciatore sauce or bolognese sauce, whatever. But today we're going to be making a marinara sauce. And to make this particular sauce, which is the base of tomato sauce right now, a marinara sauce, we're going to add, show this to the camera. We, we sauteed garlic, fresh garlic, you know, and possibly an oil. And we're going to take this and add it to the sauce here. And this will make this basic tomato, basic tomato sauce a marinara sauce. Make sure it all gets in and whip it up real good. And before, when we, before we even get to this stage, by the way, the sauce that we made, just this made, which is over here, we strain it, I'll put it to a food mill to get all that mirepoix and large spices out of it to make it nice and smooth and gives it a nice texture. Now he's going to see, he's going to whip this up real good. And we should let this simmer about 15, 20 minutes and then you'll have a nice marinara sauce. So just make sure you lower that down a little. Okay, so that'll be fine. Now, in the meantime, while that sauce is cooking, what Michael is going to do is we're going to cook some uh, pasta. We have some uh, spaghetti here. And we have a pot boiling here. Now, this pot is boiling. And we have to remember that we have to put salt and oil in this water. Oil is to prevent the macaroni from sticking while it's cooking, and salt is for flavor. Also, the water is boiling. Before we add pasta to the water, it has to be boiling because pasta is a, is a starch, and starch cooks at 212 degrees, which happens to be the boiling point of water. So the, if we added the pasta to this water, and if it was not boiling, it would just stick together and be very, uh, the water would turn cloudy and be very mushy. It would not, it would not create a, uh, a quality product at all, okay? So now, this water is boiling rapidly. We have the salt, we have the oil in there. Michael's gonna throw the spaghetti in. He's gonna keep stirring it so it doesn't stick together. He's going to throw that in. Now, while the spaghetti is cooking, we're now going to start to make the chicken parmesan. And could Paul Kellaway come up here? There's another senior in our program. He's going to make the, uh, the chicken parmesan for us. What we're going to do, we have a saute pan here with oil in it. We're going to get this oil nice and hot. And while this is heating up, Paul's going to start breading the chicken breast. Um, let me take this, Michael. Take this and just put that in there. Now, first thing that Paul's going to do is pound the chicken. we have to do, we have to pound the chicken. Um, and the reason why we pound the chicken, we just pound it lightly. We put it in between foil and we use a cleaver. And the reason for that is to make the chicken more tender. It makes it a little bit thinner so it's easier and quicker to cook. And it actually makes the uh, portion look a little bigger also. And Paul's trimming off the fat off the chicken right now. And these other five breasts have already been, <coughs> excuse me, been pounded. You can just pound this on the, uh, the sixth one just to show you. Get 
very careful. Remember not to pound it too hard because ch chicken breast is very tender. And uh, if you pound it a little bit too hard, it'll just break apart. rise a little bit. The egg wash, which is egg, eggs and milk worked together. It's approximately six eggs to a quart of milk to make an egg wash what we need. But what this does, it gives it, it adheres the breading together and gives it color and flavor. The next step is our seasoned breadcrumbs, which we make our own seasoned breadcrumbs. Uh, it's got salt, pepper, parsley, garlic powder, and grated cheese in it. And this gives it a nice coating, gives it color and flavor. And then our finished product ends up in this pan here. Paul's going to these up now. Let's check our spaghetti. We want to cook our spaghetti, by the way, al dente, which means slightly underdone or uh, firm texture. We want, don't want it to be too mushy because uh, it's not very, uh, it's not very flavorful that way. It has to be, it should be a little bit on the firm side, good firm side to give it a good texture. How's that spaghetti? Notice now though Paul's breading, he keeps his right hand free because if he, if he used both his hands in this flour and, and egg wash mixture, mixture, his hands would get very, very messy. By just by doing it, people with his right hand free, his right hand is always dry. So then when he takes this chicken out of the breadcrumbs, if this hand is, was wet, it would actually start to pull the breading off. By keeping it dry, this breading, the breading stays on the chicken. And you want to make sure your breading has to be completely coated. If not, when you, when you put it into the hot grease, uh, if it wasn't completely coated, the grease would get inside and make it very greasy. By the way, the Farm Street in here at the high school is open month. Monday, Tuesday, Thursdays, and Fridays were open uh, from 11 o'clock to, to 12.15. Um, no reservations are needed unless you have a large group, in it, but the, pu the public is invited, and most of our meals range around from uh, 3 to $4, and uh, we invite everyone to come in. I think it's a nice experience. Kids do a very good job. We're going to be making six uh, chicken parmesans here. What's uh, Part of food bringing you will have sauteing them. This is one of our most popular items in the restaurant. It's very, uh, every time we put this on a menu, we get a big crowd in, so we figured we'd show this one today. Be our pleasure. Washing his hands, we'll just take some room here for us.
saute these chicken breasts off. Um, I think it's very important. We have a saute pan on the stove. We want to make sure our oil is hot before we add chicken to the pan. And Paul's checking to see if the oil is hot by adding a little bit of breadcrumb to the oil. It didn't really sizzle right. We're going to give it a one more minute. In the meantime, we're going to get a pan for the chicken. We want to make sure the oil is hot before we add the chicken to make sure it seals right away and sears. And I think our oil is pretty much all set now. Uh, we can add the chicken now. We'll do three at a time. And when we add the chicken, we want to make sure when you add it, when we add it, we, we let the chicken breast go away from you towards the back of the stove. If we did it the other way, towards us, if we would happen to drop the chicken breast, the hot grease could uh, Splat them and burn ourselves. We want to make sure we we always point it towards the back of the stove. We want we want to brown this now on both sides, nice. Students here at the Farm Street Inn who enrolled in this program go on to culinary art school also. You can go on to culinary art schools at such example as Johnson and Wales, uh, Newberry College, uh, Essex Agricultural School, which are all very fine uh, culinary art schools. A lot of these students go on to those schools, colleges, to further their education. After uh, what we have here now is the uh, spaghetti that we just cooked. We'll put just a little bit of oil on it so it's not stick together. And we'll, as soon as we're through with the chicken, we'll be putting our nice hot marinara sauce over it, and we'll be able to serve it. And to our right here, we have our broiler on. We're putting a, we use a broiler here. What we're going to do is uh, we're going to brown our, uh, melt our cheese, and we put over the chicken. We're going to use the broiler to melt it. Also, you can use it at home. You can use an oven. Use an oven or anything like that. Sweden also offers catering services. Uh, we do a lot of catering here. Um, we have a lot of customers who call up that they want uh, certain products catered or they want certain foods. Uh, a lot of products we have at home, we offer these catering services. Our phone number here is 246-6451. You can ask for the Farm Street Inn. And we can help you in any, any way possible. We also do a lot of baked goods also. We do cakes, pies, desserts, breads, rolls, and so forth, uh, which we sell a lot of and are very, very popular also. So all these uh, all these uh, food service uh, service services are offered here, and they're they're at your at your disposal. It'd be a pleasure for you to give us a call. We'll help you any way we can. We're going to turn these chickens over in a second, and we'll be able to serve this shot. marinara sauce, which is all picked in, all set, ready to go. We're going to take this now and move it over here. And we're going to take three of our chickens and put it in our pan here. And then we'll put the other three in that one. I'll hold this way. Put the other three in. We're going to put a little sauce over these three chicken breasts. We'll be 
sauce. And we'll put some mozzarella cheese on top of that. You could use either the shredded mozzarella cheese like we have here, or you could use the sliced mozzarella cheese also, which you can buy. We'll sprinkle it over our chicken. And we'll melt this under the broiler. Okay, now our spaghetti is done here. Mike, you want to, have to put some nice uh, marinara sauce over our spaghetti here? A nice platter of uh, spaghetti. Put a marinara sauce over it. And we're going to garnish it with a little bit of grated cheese and parsley. And then it'll be all ready to serve. Chicken breast of uh, melted and browning. It'll be out in one second. 